The Optics OSN 1805 Packet Enhanced Transport Platform is a new MS OTN product. It is 5U high and available in DC power and AC power models. When being used on its own, an Optics OSN 1805 supports a maximum of 700 gigabits per second, OTN capacity of 700 gigabits per second, packet capacity 280 gigabits per second SDH higher order capacity or 20 gigabits per second SDH lower order capacity. The Optics OSN1805 applies mainly to the Metro Access layer and aggregation layer. Both the DC powered and AC powered models of the Optics OSN 1805 can be easily installed in an ETSI cabinet or 19 inch cabinet. A fibre management tray is used to coil optical fibres or fibre jumpers that are not in use. The fibre management tray supports a maximum of 40 fibres to be led in with a total fibre length capacity of 50 metres. An integrated chassis consists of a subrack and a built-in fibre management tray. A dispersion compensation module frame or DCM frame is used to house the DCM. An Optics OSN 1805 supports two DCM frames, each of which supports two DCMs. A DC power distribution unit or PDU is located on the top of a cabinet and is used to supply power to the equipment. A DC PDU consists of two blocks, block A and block B, which provide backup for each other. The Optics OSN 1805 can work with an Optics OSN 1802 for transport at the optical and electrical layers. In this configuration, the Optics OSN 1802 functions as the optical subrack for the Optics OSN 1805 and houses only optical layer boards. The Optics OSN 1805 houses electrical layer boards. This shows a typical configuration at a 40 wavelength site. Four Optics OSN 1805 devices and two Optics OSN 1802 devices are used together. The 5U chassis is highly integrated and supports 15 service slots, which include 14 line and tributary service slots and one OTU, OADM and AUX slot. Each slot supports a maximum access capacity of 50 gigabits per second. OSN 1805 supports various boards for full service backhaul. An optical transponder unit board or OTU board converts client signals into CWDM or DWDM compliant wavelengths for WDM transmission. An optical multiplexer and demultiplexer board multiplexes or demultiplexes optical signals. A universal line board allows ODUK, packet and VC services to be carried over the same OTU pipe 
to provide efficient mixed transmission of small granular services. Let's have a look at how services are processed and mapped on a universal line board. We'll use the cooperation between boards as an example. Services are first received by the OTU board, packet board and TDM board and are then scheduled to the universal line board through the universal switching unit. After being processed by the CrossConnect unit, the services are transmitted to the OTU processing module, packet processing module and SDH processing module. The services are then transmitted to the OTN processing module and mapped to ODU0, ODU1, ODU2 and ODU Flex. Finally, the services are multiplexed into OTU2 or OTU2E signals. After electric to optical conversion, four 10 gigabit per second OTU2 or OTU2E optical signals are produced and sent to the downstream NE. The OTN line and tributary boards are separated. When working together with a system control, switching and timing board, OTN line and tributary boards can schedule ODUK services of any level as well as provide the functions of OTU boards, thereby implementing more flexible electrical layer signal scheduling and using higher bandwidth. A packet board provides access for data packets and implements packet switching and bandwidth management. A TDM board receives, processes and transmits SDH and PDH services. An EOS board receives, processes and transmits EOS services. An optical amplifying board is used at the transmit and receive end to amplify optical signals. An optical supervisory channel board receives and transmits optical supervisory channel signals. A system control, switching and timing board integrates the cross-connect, system control and clock units to provide communication control, service scheduling and clock processing functions. An auxiliary board provides auxiliary ports including external clock ports and alarm input and output ports. A fan board provides four independent fans for heat dissipation. A power board supplies AC or DC power to the chassis. A PIU board is used for the AC power supply and an APIU board is used for the DC power supply. The two types of boards cannot be used at the same time. An air cooling method is used for heat dissipation. The fan board supports intelligent speed adjustment which ensures stable heat dissipation and lowers noise and reduces energy consumption. Here we provide the typical and maximum power consumption in typical configurations and the maximum power consumption of the DC powered and AC powered chassis. The typical power consumption is low and the equipment is energy saving which helps reduce customers' OPEX.